signing on to eFolio 2.0 is pretty easy. This is a little different than signing on to the older version of eFolio, though. There are a couple different permeations that we need to discuss, or if you've never signed on to eFolio, please join me as I walk you through the steps of getting into the system. I skipped a few screens, but after you've gone through the welcome screen, examine and agree to the terms and conditions of eFolio, you'll come to the sign up code screen. This is an optional screen. Your teacher or school might require you to enter a code at this point in time. Ask them what that code will be. What this code does is it pre-formats your eFolio with certain pages and to-do items. You can go back and enter these in the future if you've forgotten to enter it now, but here's the warning. You won't get the pre-formatted pages and your to-do list will be combined. At the profile selection, it's rather easy. If you're a student, choose student. If you're not a student, choose professional. This section requires you to tell eFolio Minnesota your age. If you are under 18, choose no. If you are over 18, choose yes. The default is over 18. When you are under 18, there are some data privacy rules that require consent to disclose information. eFolio Minnesota respects your privacy and the law. Your email address is very important in eFolio 2.0 because it is your username when you sign on to your eFolio account in the future. I recommend you use an email address that you think is a permanent address, one that you can email your password now and in the future, especially if, heaven forbid, you forget your password. Don't worry, there's a place in eFolio where you can change your email address if you want to. First and foremost, as you enter the account details form, you must be sure and enter information onto all lines that are bolded. Let's go through some of the trouble spots that I've seen. The address line 2 is your apartment number. The country is United States. The postal code is your zip code. When you come to the drop down box, it asks what is the primary use for your eFolio account at this time. There are two choices. If you're in school, you choose the education or classroom. If you're using eFolio to help you in a job search, you would pick the workforce employment or career development section. In the next section that there's a drop-down box that says, please select from the following organizations, the one you are most closely associated with or enrolled at. It's more than likely the first drop-down box, which is a college, or means you to your institution. Then when it asks, please enter the name of this organization or school you're most closely associated with or enrolled at, you'd enter the college that you're enrolled at. Lastly, there's a place for your password. It requires at least eight characters. The old maximum is 11 characters. I suspect it might be that case again. This slide reviews the information you've entered in earlier. You could print this page for future reference. Note in the bottom left corner there are codes you'll need to type in. If you can't read these words, there's a way to hit redo, I've highlighted that, for another set of words. If you are vision impaired, there's a button to click to hear words that you will need to type in. Congratulations! When you see the screen, it means an eFolio has been set up for you. You will need to go to your email for account details. Don't delete that email. You may need to return that email to recall some of your account details later. If you want to quickly log into your account, you don't need to go to your email. Just click on the words, log into your account. Congratulations again.